Hey guys, I'm Dave. Welcome back to Parts and Restoration. Today I'm going to be working on this Black & Decker 16 gauge sheet metal shear. This machine is from the 1960s. It was found at a junk shop in Maryland where I paid $5 for it just as an unusable tool. Needed a complete restoration which you'll see here in a moment. As you can see the finish on this is pretty rough. The entire casement is made of die cast aluminum and it's just heat up from over the years. It's covered in gear oil and just completely unusable in its present condition. If you'd like to enjoy this video with no commentary, click on the link in the top of the description. First step in any restoration is to take the machine apart and get it nice and clean before you get into the nitty gritty. So we're going to start out by taking this apart. There's, the, uh, there's a bearing with an eccentric that drives a uh, reciprocating cutting tooth. And then we've got a, got a helical gear that is driven by a pinion off of the motor, which you'll see in a moment. Got this nice plastic hand, guard, uh, hand holder, or I guess, wait, it's where you control the tool. I don't know what it's called. Ball, hand ball. <laughs> there's the rotor of the motor. You can see the uh, cooling fan. And then this is just the bit that holds the handle on. Now we're going to remove the tooth out of the bottom cutter that actually stays in place, stays stationary. And then the next we're going to take out the, uh, the top reciprocating tooth. It's funny that Allen key right there is from Ikea. It's all I had in my house at the time. Uh, this entire restoration was done in my kitchen with basic tools. My shop is under construction right now. Doesn't that look like chocolate syrup? It looks like what you would pour onto your ice cream. <laughs> Just got the right look and consistency, but that's the um, that's the reciprocating portion. And there's the helical uh, pinion gear. It's driven off the motor. A little C clip that holds that in place. And now we're just going to separate the switch housing from the motor housing. Again, this is all aluminum, very easily scratched, and the tool's you know 60 years old, so no surprise. It's had a couple hot suppers. It's been beaten up a few times going to disconnect the wiring, there's the ground coming off, and then we're going to disassemble the, uh, the bit that holds on the cord. These four Allen, Allen screws held in this baffle here that I'm going to pull out. It sort of separates the fan and kind of concentrates some air to bring it across that motor. Now we're going to bring out the stator, the windings, disconnect the brushes, and knock that stator out. They're the field windings. Uh, greasy, but still pretty well covered in their lacquer. And now the brushes are going to come out, and the carbons have plenty of life left on them, and they're nicely worn in. When I ran this thing before the um, restoration, it didn't really spark at all. It was great. Really nicely run and tool. The anti-flex on the cord was shot, and the cord was just completely dry rotted, so that got cut apart and discarded. I replaced it with one from um, that I bought on McMaster car. Nice south wire cord, and I used some gas, uh, some rubber gas tube, to make a new anti-flex or flex protection. Just pushing out the old uh, wire assembly there, and we're gonna disconnect the ground, and we'll be ready to move along. So now everything needs to get clean. Um, what I did for this one was I used soapy water, just Dove dish soap. Um, in concentrate in some water and I boiled it got it nice and hot and it got all the castings nice and warm made it really easy to scrub all the old crap off of this thing I think it was mostly gear oil and grease caked onto here and I just used an old toothbrush um, I really wasn't concerned about damaging the finish on this uh, machine just because it's I mean the aluminum is soft and it could easily scratch as you could see just from years of its use but um, for tough stuff, I used a little bit of, I used a, a stainless steel wire brush, like right there. Um, but mostly cleaning all the grease away, I just used a toothbrush and it worked fine. Pushing a um, wadded up piece of paper towel through the um, place where the reciprocating arm goes, get it nice and clean, and now all the parts are nice and clean. Just using dish soap, I did use some degreaser, it's called a product called Greased Lightning, which I like. And so now we're gonna get into sanding and cleaning up all the finishes. Like I said, I did this entire thing in my kitchen. Fortunately, I had a little clamp-on vise that uh, was given by a friend and was able to protect my table and clamp it right onto it. So with this, I'm going through the grits. I went from 80 to 1500 
And the key to getting a good doing a good job with this is to, um, to crisscross or cross hatch your sanding. So I'll go one direction and make it nice and clean with that grit, with say 60 grit, and then I'll go to 80 grit. I'll go perpendicular to the sanding line. So the key is to remove all of the sanding lines from the previous grit. So each time, I want to make sure I get rid of all of the lines from the previous grit. So I'm just going through that. And now I'm up to 600 using wet and dry, looking pretty good there. And I use Scotch Bright. I went from green Scotch Bright to the gray in between coat Scotch Bright all the way to the final finish white Scotch Bright to get that result right there. Looks pretty good. Not perfect. If I buffed it with a buffing wheel, it would get better. But I wanted to do this entire job in my kitchen with basic tools, the kind of thing that anybody could do. So I just use sandpaper and Scotch Bright. So once I get that rough scratch in there, get all the old scratches off, I can go perpendicular to those and I can get rid of all the lines that I made in the previous grit. And I continue to do that until I have a nice clean finish. Cross hatching makes it a lot easier to see where the uh, previous scratches are. So this head casting here was left raw from the factory, that's how they did it, but I wanted to make it look a little nicer. So I went in with files, got all of the uh, rough casting marks off, and then I went in and did the same process with 80 through 1500 on sandpaper. Just got rid of all the kind of bumpy casting marks there. I cleaned up that one edge, just it looks so much nicer. I'm gonna go and do all the time to clean up all these pieces. I may as well do the entire thing. It's my philosophy there. I was actually using a butter knife as a uh, as a sanding block for this. It worked out pretty well, just because most of these were nice flat surfaces, and it's just what I had on hand. I'm not. I didn't have a, a wood scrap or a whatever. Take a look at this. Beautiful. You can see a couple deep gouges in there. Nothing's perfect, but I did the best I could. So we're just cleaning up all the, there's some flattened out spots where this thing took some hits over the years and that's just soft aluminum. Um, clean that up nice. Now this is plastic. I used, um, I used 600 and 1500 on this just to get all the old scratches off. I did it wet. And then I used, um, I wanted some wax, but what I found was I had some black shoe polish, which is mostly just paraffin wax anyway. And I buffed it on there. You know, when you touch it, it feels like plastic now. All the um, all that's left is the wax that got in between all the little scratches. It worked out really well. Nice and clean, movie magic. And now we have all of our clean, refinished parts ready for reassembly. Okay, so there's my south wire cord, and that's some gas, um, gas hose uh, that I got from McMaster Car. I made sure that the interior diameter of the flexible gas hose and the exterior diameter of the wire were the same. I'm just gonna start rewiring everything. There's my ground. The original switch, which I buffed up a little bit with some um, with some sandpaper, and you can see there's that old fiber board that they use as um, mitigation for um, making sure you don't get a get an arc or a short through the casting. Just reconnecting everything now. I probably should have used some um, proper wire connectors. I just didn't have any on hand, and again, I wanted this to be a every man's restoration in the kitchen with basic tools. Just getting everything rewired. And she's alive, everything is done properly. My connections work, that scared the crap out of me by the way. And we're good. You can see I didn't show the work on this casting here, but this one was a bear. There's so many different complex curves and, um, and radii that it was just made it difficult to get polished up properly. It took a while. I think I have about 15 hours of sanding into this project. And our brushes are going, our brush holders are going back in. And we're gonna put the, uh, the stator windings back in place as well. It was kind of a, a pain in the butt to get the wires put back properly, but it just took some time. And I watched my video from the disassembly to see where everything went, it made it easy. Connecting the brushes. There's the baffle for the fan and those set screws that hold it in place. There's our rotor, and the bearing on that was in pretty good shape, so I left it be. Just getting everything lined up. I had to push the brushes out of the way to get it all the way back, but that wasn't a big deal. I'm just 
starting to reconnect everything. Look at the finish on that though. I mean, compared to before, it's beautiful. And then, you know, you'll never see another uh, casting just like that on one of these machines. It's just so smooth. They left them in the raw. No sense in doing all that fi hand filing like I did for a production tool. You know, it was tough. Putting this thing back together, I wound up scratching this thing quite a few times. It's, the aluminum is so soft that it doesn't take well to um, to a finish like this. Just, it's beautiful and it looks great, but uh, you know, you run the risk of it scratching and if you're gonna be upset about it, then you know, don't use the tool, put it in a display case. I'm gonna wind up using this thing, so it's gonna get scratched up, but you just kind of gotta change your expectations. All right, we're putting the cutting teeth back in place, the shearing teeth. Um, and um, you gotta set the clearance on those with a feeler gauge. I think it's like um, like a couple th couple thou clearance. I can't remember. There's that uh, hand holder, and we're done. Except for the plate, I, had to, I was able to pop those rivets out from the back because those holes for them were through drilled. Just use a punch. And of course, a little branding. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna actually use this thing. I bought some 16 gauge sheet metal from Home Depot and uh, I made a little pattern on here that would allow me to build a six by 12 tray for either tools or whatever with a rolled over edge. Fortunately, I do not have a break for this, so I'm just gonna have to sit on the shelf for now, but this will just demonstrate the tool. The tool worked uh, beautifully. It cut like butter. Um, I was able to have a lot of control. Once I actually grabbed that line, that I was cutting along, it kind of just pulled itself along. It didn't pull uncontrollably, but it was almost like a, you know, you have like a self-propelled mower. It kind of just gives you a little bit of help. The tool definitely was working its way through easily. Um, and I can make straight lines or curves with this thing, which I was really happy with. And it just worked absolutely exceptionally. Um, and I can't wait to try this out of another project. So let's compare. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. If you like the video, you'll definitely like the photos that I post every single day to my Instagram account at Parts and Restoration. Be sure to hit that like button to let me know if you enjoyed this content and feel free to share with your friends to help get the word out. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy videos like this. I post all the time. And um, if you want to support the work that I do, I do have an account on Patreon at Parts and Restoration. Thank you guys so much again for your support and I look forward to seeing you soon on the next video.